Jesus lives, let us rejoice in him and hear his word. The word that he brings to us today are the words from John's gospel, as I mentioned, John chapter 20. We'll be looking particularly at verses 24 to 31. I'd like to just reread a few, a few verses from that section. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God, Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is God's word. Let us pray. Gracious Lord Jesus, the wonderful news of Easter still rings in our ears, but we fear that in our hearts there are still doubts, just as with your disciples. We pray through this message today that you would help to take away our doubts and confirm our trust in your holy word that reveals to us the message that saves us. Amen. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. I saw him die. I was there. I saw Joseph and Nicodemus put him in the tomb. They rolled a stone in front of that tomb. Soldiers sealed it. Soldiers guarded that tomb. I know, friends, that you want him to be alive as much as I do, and maybe that's what you think you saw. But he's dead. I won't believe it. I won't believe it unless I can see him for myself, unless I can touch him with my own hands, put my finger in the hole that was left by the nails, put my hand into the place where that spear pierced his side. I will not, I won't, I can't believe it. Thomas was actually one of the stronger disciples of Jesus. When Jesus went to Lazarus' tomb, it was Thomas who spoke up, knowing that Jesus was heading towards Jerusalem and said, let us go with him that we may die with him. And the other disciples, well, they weren't all that firm and sure either. Remember when the, the women came back from Jesus' tomb on Easter Sunday morning? They didn't believe what the women were telling them. And when Jesus appeared to them, the other other Gospels tell us that they doubted and Jesus showed them his hands and his feet. No, Thomas was just like everyone else. He had doubts because Thomas, like everyone else, has a hard heart by nature. And Thomas didn't want to believe what his companions were telling him. And that doubt that he had was bringing his salvation into jeopardy. Because the Apostle Paul says, if Christ is not raised, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. Well, if Thomas didn't believe that his Lord was alive, then his faith was futile. He was still in his sins and in danger of losing his eternal life. Are you Thomas's twin? We sometimes call Thomas Doubting Thomas, DT, Doubting Thomas. But really, Thomas didn't doubt any more than the other disciples did. But the Holy Spirit chose to record this incident for us, to teach us something for our learning, to help us understand our own hard hearts that often doubt. Thomas had a nickname. His nickname was Twin. In fact, the word Thomas itself, the name Thomas is the Aramaic for twin. John explains that when he says he's called Didymus, which is the Greek word for twin. I don't know if Thomas had a twin brother or sister or not. He may have, he may not have. It might have been that was just a nickname. People just called him Twin. I kind of doubt that his parents actually named him Twin. (laughs) 
but we don't know for sure. But I'd like to play on that name just a little bit today by asking you again, are you Thomas's twin? And by twin, I mean, do you have doubts? Are you kind of a skeptic when it comes down to it? I know I am. I'm, I'm pretty skeptical about things. People come to me and tell me something. Usually my first response is, prove it, show me. I'll see it, when, I'll believe it when I see it. How about you? Somebody comes to you and says, there was just an earthquake. Do you say, I didn't feel it? As if to say, well, I don't believe you. Or somebody a couple weeks ago had come to you and said, hey, Notre Dame in Paris is on fire. Would you have said, yeah, right, <laughs> until you saw it on the news yourself? Or if somebody came in right now and said, hey, look up at the moon, it's turned bright red. Would you say, yeah, I'll believe that when I see it, not even go outside because you just wouldn't even believe it. See, we are Thomas's twin by nature because we are very skeptical about things that we hear. And it's bad enough when we do that with people around us, but it's even worse. It's dangerous when those doubts begin to come about God's word. When we feel like we need to see in order to believe. Remember Pharaoh in Egypt? How he saw all of those signs that God gave him and the plagues, and yet he didn't believe. It didn't go so well for him, did it? Or like the Jews, we have a hard heart who hardened their heart against Jesus even after he told them who he was and did miraculous signs in front of him, yet their hard heart wouldn't believe what they saw with their own eyes standing there in front of him. So also our heart leads us sometimes to doubt the things that God says to us. And so we find ourselves in our lives sometimes complaining to God about our life because we doubt the truth of his word when he says he really does work out everything for our good. Or maybe we find ourselves being all anxious in our life and upset about things because we really doubt the fact that Jesus said, don't worry because I will provide for you. Or we find ourselves not praying daily and adamantly because we really kind of doubt whether it's true when Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Or maybe even we doubt that Jesus is really with us because we really have trouble believing he's really alive and is with us every moment of our day to the end of the age. See, we need Jesus to rescue us from our doubts, from our hard heart. Just as he rescued Thomas, the doubter. The disciples were gathered together a second Sunday, a week later after Easter Sunday, in that same room where they had gathered the first week. Only this time, Thomas was with them. And again, the doors were all locked, and Jesus came and stood among them miraculously, and that probably started them. So the first thing Jesus said was, Peace, <laughs> be with you. But then immediately he turned his attention to Thomas turned to the one who doubted and wouldn't believe that he was alive. And in great patience, he said to Thomas, okay, go ahead, put your finger in my hand. Go ahead, take your hand, put it in that wound in my side where the soldiers put their spear and stop doubting and believe. How much the Lord Jesus loved Thomas. Instead of rebuking him, instead of speaking to him sternly and angrily about his unbelief and his doubt, Jesus patiently gives to him what he craves, gives to him what will help him at this moment come to believe Jesus is alive. And by God's grace, he created faith in Thomas's heart so that Thomas could confess in faith, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus said something that shows how much he also loves you and me. He said to Thomas, you believed because you saw me. 
But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. See, Jesus understands we won't get the chance to see Jesus. We won't have an opportunity to lay our eyes on him. Perhaps we'd like to. Perhaps we'd like, like Thomas, to take our finger and put it into Jesus' nail prints and take our hands and put it into his side so that we could believe like Thomas did. But Jesus is telling us that it's more blessed for us to believe God's word, to take God at his word, than to see. Because seeing is not necessarily believing, as we already indicated. Pharaoh and the Jews that lived at Jesus' time, they didn't believe even though they saw. It's still a miracle of God's grace. When he uses the powerful message about Jesus to bring us to faith in Jesus, and when we believe in Jesus, we are truly blessed. We are happy. We are filled with God's favor because of what that message tells us for our everyday lives. Seeing isn't necessarily believing. Jesus is telling us what is better, what is blessed for you is that you believe, you take God at his word even though you can't see it. And so the Apostle John ends this section with a little commentary about why he wrote what he did in his gospel. And he tells us he didn't write his gospel to give us every detail of Jesus' life. John says there's a lot of stuff that the gospels don't contain about Jesus that he did. But John wrote exactly what the Holy Spirit wanted him to write. Exactly and just enough so that when we hear these words that the witnesses wrote down, that God through his Holy Spirit breathed upon these men, caused them to write for us, those powerful words are enough to bring us to believe in Jesus. And through that faith, John says, to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, we have this blessing, we have life. And life means that we have peace in this world that is so full of turmoil and anxiety. Life means that we have hope in this world that has so much hopelessness and despair. Life means that we have purpose in this world that is so filled with purposelessness. And life means that we have the certainty of living for eternity, even though this world is scarred by death. That's what we have through faith in Jesus. To have faith is to have Jesus, and to have Jesus is to have life. <clears throat> Peter once wrote to Christians just like us, though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Friends, Satan doesn't want us to have that joy and that salvation. And so he's in league with our sinful, hardened hearts that are within us, trying again and again in life to get us to doubt God's word, just as he did Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he gets, tries to get us to doubt it by asking us that same question. Did God really say? Beware of that DT that still exists in our hearts. Because doubts can rob us of all of the wonderful blessings that God has put in his promises to us. And finally, doubts can rob us of eternal life. Believing is not seeing. Believing is taking God at his word. Let your life also be a twin to Thomas in another way. Let it be a twin to Thomas in confessing in faith what Thomas did. My Lord and my God. Not because you've seen him with your eyes, but because that's what his word 
has revealed to you. Blessed are you if you do not see and yet believe. Amen.